It's got a good pattern to him. He's got some length of spine. He's got plenty of dimension and power for us. And he's got some extension up front. No, he's not the absolute neatest, freakiest thing up there in the front end, but he doesn't need to be. He's got some mass and some power, and he's got the structure to go underneath it. The calf that we find to go second, here's the one that's really flashy, one that's got an extension up in that front end, really like that about him. If anything, you know, he's got that profile look, but we'd like to give him a little more center dimension, maybe just give him a hint more foot size to be competitive with that calf that wins that class. A bull that comes next, one maybe it's just kind of a combination of those up there in front of him. One that uh, we, we like him when you view him on the side other than that front end. You know, he gets just a little bit steep up in that shoulder for us and like to set him back in that shoulder and that blade just ever so slightly. And then we've got a bull that comes next here. One that, uh, you know, he stops right there. He's got some profile to him. I'd like to maybe give him a little more foot size to go any higher, but still a super nice calf to be where he's at. And then we round out the class with one that just gives up an overall amount of quality to go any higher. Nice set of bulls. Let's give them a round of applause. Congratulations here in class 2B in your Angus ring. First place will go to back number 106, Del Porto Position Y95, exhibited by Dawson Lee Del Porto of Oakley, California. Second place, go to back number 103, Straight Sir Harry S466, exhibited by Jared William Straight of Fairmont, Oklahoma. Third place, will go to Hortzman Alpha Male 046H, exhibited by Larry and Joe Hortzman, West Lafayette, Indiana. Fourth place will go to KCSWRB Divergent 2020, exhibited by R. Cole Kaufman of Mount Sydney, Virginia. And fifth place in that class will go to RC Confederate 017, exhibited by Shelley Roulette of Martin, Tennessee. Now in your Angus ring will be class 3B. We get out here and get this class lined up. For Matt and I, it's pretty straightforward and pretty logical class winner for us. Uh, this bull that we started with, when you uh, glance at that paperwork in front of us and look at the weight per day of age, he exceeds in that aspect of things. And, you know, we'll be the first to tell you that, that yes, we're going to, especially in these bulls, we're going to glance at this paperwork. But, but if you know us at all, we're guys of phenotype and like to look at them on the foot and, and see them from there. And he, this guy, he does that on the paperwork on weight per day of age. And, but when you sit back and analyze him, there's just more good to this guy. Uh, you know, you talk about a bull that he can sure get out and go. He's got plenty of rib shape. He's really square and level out of that hip. Uh, and just that, you know, just combines everything that we need to in a heavier weight type of package. An awfully good bull to start the class. This calf that's second, you know, uh, here's one that he's got some profile to him. You know, one we sure enough like. He lays in there good at that shoulder. He's got some extension. We like that freshness about him. It just simply just doesn't have quite as much as the one that wins at class. And, 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 but still 
still an awfully good one. You get down here in the, the other end of this class and these two bulls, two really nice bulls still. Uh, these guys don't have anything to be ashamed of by no means. Two really good ones. They just get beat in, over, in overall terms of quality as those two that start that class. A nice set of bulls. Let's give these guys a round of applause, please. Well, congratulations in class 3B. First place, go to back number 121, Silvera's Convoy 0340, exhibited by Silvera Bro Brothers of Firebox, California, and Tri T Farms of Visalia, California. Second place in that class will go to back number 115, Schilling Area 51, exhibited by Kaylin Schilling, Edson, Kansas. Third place will go to Checker Hill Hannity, 027, exhibited by Charlie Baker, Clinton, Oklahoma. And fourth place will go to FGR Popeye, 0243, exhibited by Flying G Ranch, Caldwell, Texas. Now in your Angus ring is Class 4B.
pretty impressive set of bulls for this class, but definitely some differences. And not to be repetitive, uh, and you know, you'll get Matt out here on the mic after a while, and you'll find out that neither one of us are are guys of a lot of words or are real smooth on the mic. So being repetitive might might be routine for you guys in the stands and listening today. But here's a bull that, that we start with that, that the word complete, you know, that once again, kind of like that last class, one that, that just puts, uh, kind of checks the right boxes for us today. You know, he can get, like you can see right here, he gets a little bit stubborn on that halter, but when that guy relaxes and goes, you know, he, he's got the right things in the right spots. You know, very complete type of calf. Uh, he's good. Good enough up front, it darn sure right at the ground when you look at that footwork. No, he's not the biggest footed, biggest bone thing out here today, but he's complete. He puts all those things together for us, and we like him to start this class on those terms. The calf that comes second, here's your big footed, big bone, burly one of the bunch, and we like those things about him. If we're going to get picky on this guy and compared to our class winner, you know, we'd like to open him up in that heart just a little bit, maybe freshen him up in that chest line so much, but still just a big stout burly type of calf to find his way into the second hole. The third place bull here. This is one when this young lady's got him stopped. You know, there's a lot of things we like about him. When we put him in motion, he just gets beat on those rear wheels for us. And we just wish we could free him up to get him any higher in the class. And he gets a little straight up in that front end for us as well. You get two bulls back here at the other end. You know, in, in a lot of classes, these two guys are going to be awfully competitive. But I think they just run into some heat up at the front end of this deal to go any higher. Sure like to loosen this guy up in the front end as he goes out across the ring. And we just like to give more mass to this calf that rounds out the class, but still an awfully good set from top to bottom. I'm going to give them a round of applause, please. Well, congratulations here in your Angus ring. Class 4B, first place is going to go to back number 123, Hortsman Kathmandu 033H, exhibited by Larry and Joe Hortsman, West Lafayette, Indiana. Weight on that bull is 1150. Second place in this class goes back number 124, DAJS, side effects 300, exhibited by Doug Angus, Doug Angus Satry of Montague, Texas. Weight on that bull is 1070. Third place in that class goes to back number 127, Lazy JB MAGA 0116, exhibited by Lazy G. Lazy J.B. Angus of Montrose, Colorado. Weight on that bull is 1204. Fourth place in that class, go to back number 126. RGCC Alibi 318, exhibited by Hunter Royer, New Richmond, Indiana. Weight on that bull, 1106. And fifth place in that class goes to back number 125. LVS El Guapo, 2002, exhibited by Levisay Farms, Cresting, California. Weight on that bull is 1040. Your final class before our division entering the ring is class 5B. Back number 849, weight on that bull is 1180. Back number 844 is 1119. Back number 130, 1048. Back number 132, weight on that bull, 1019. Back number 133, 1072. And back number 134, weight on that bull, 1172.
We would like to remind everyone ringside that the 82nd annual National Angus Bull Sale will take place this afternoon at 1 o'clock right next door in our Super Barn Sale Arena. Bulls will be on display starting at 1130. You can pick up a sale catalog at the Angus booth and visit with the American Angus Association regional managers if you have any questions. Once again, the National Angus Bull Sale will start today at 1 o'clock in the Super Barn Sale Arena. We start this class with, here's a bull that uh, Matt and I find pretty quickly. Um, there's a lot of good to this guy. He's parked there, he's got a profile, he's got the look, he's got some smoothness to him, some extension. You put him in motion, he darn sure isn't going to disappoint there as well. You look at him on paper, uh, the pretty pretty impressive spots on there when you look at him on the paperwork side of things. Uh, just an awfully good one for us to go ahead and jump out there and grab a hold of with in this class. It kind of that comes second. You know, we sure enough like the burliness to this one. You know, the, there's some mass to him, some bigger stature pieces to him that we sure enough like. The testicular part of this bull, uh, certainly large. We like that about him. Um, just an awfully good bull. Just runs into one that we like quite a bit to start this class. Kind of a challenging pair for us when we get here in third and fourth. You know, we've got a calf that we opt to use just uh, got more profile to him. One that's got a little more 
look to him, and he finds his way into that third spot for us. The Kef that comes forth, you know, a lot of center dimension to him. We like that about him. Just wish we could extend him up in that front end, maybe have a little more eye appeal for the two of us out here today. And then we get into a Kef here next. We just wish we could lay him back in that shoulder a little bit, soften him up in that flank ever so slightly. And then we've got one that rounds out the class, that kind of like that last class. Still just an awfully good set of bulls, one that just gives up that overall quality to go any higher. Let's give those guys a round of applause, please. Well, congratulations in Class 5B. First place will go to back number 849. Connolly Verified 0853, exhibited by Connell, Connolly Cattle Company of Sulphur, Oklahoma. Second place will go to back number 134. LK Intuition 010, exhibited by Alexis Coling, Curryville, Missouri. Third place will go to back number 132, Lazy JB Ranchin, 0759, exhibited by Lazy JB Angus, Montrose, Colorado. Fourth place will go to back number 130, Sankey Southern Star, 014, exhibited by Chris and Sharon Sankey of Council Grove, Kansas. Fifth place will go to WCC Turnabout H2, exhibited by Wilson Cattle Company, Cloverdale, Indiana. And sixth place will go to LVS Sir Henry, 2008, exhibited by Levisay Farms, Creston, California. At this time, we're bringing in all of your firsts and seconds to select your champion reserve spring bull calf. Coming out of Class 1B, first place exhibited by Jackson Ray, Holdenville, Oklahoma. First place out of Class 2B, exhibited by Dawson Lee Del Porto, Oakley, California. Class 3B, first place was exhibited by Silveras Bros, Firebaugh, California, and Tri-T Farms, Visalia, California. Class 4B, first place exhibited by Larry and Joe Hortzman of West Lafayette, Indiana. And Class 5B, first place exhibited by Connolly Cattle Company, Sulphur, Oklahoma. Those, for those of you joining us ringside, please join me in putting your hands together to congratulate our exhibitors in your spring bull calf division. The 2021 Angus Foundation Heifer Offering is a unique opportunity with a generous donation from Manoy Angus of Espen, Kansas. This offering grants the winning bidder the chance to select a female from their entire heifer crop of Benoit Angus. This exciting heifer package will benefit the Angus Foundation and will lead off the national bull sale at 1 o'clock today in the Super Barn Sale Arena. Once again, the national Angus bull sale will be today at 1 o'clock. Super Barn Sale Arena, the 82nd Annual National Angus Bull Sale. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we're we're already having a blast. It's uh, it, what an impressive set of bull calves we have here, and it's uh, it'll be interesting to see them grow and mature as they uh, come into big bulls here next year. With that said, uh, we're going to try and keep up the pace for uh, set a pace for tomorrow. And uh, Jason, go get your granny reserve. Well, congratulations, your spring bull calf champion exhibited by Connolly Cattle Company, Sulphur, Oklahoma, with Connolly Verified 0853. Weight on that bull is 1180. Second place in that class exhibited by Alexis Coling. 
of class. Your reserve champion is going to be exhibited by Silveras Brothers of Fireball, California, and Tri-T Farms of Visalia, California, with Silveras Convoy 0340. Once again, congratulations to those exhibitors, and we will look to get started with your next division, Class 6B. Entering the Angus ring right now is Class 6B. The weights on these bulls are as follows. Back number 136 will be 1202. Back number 139, 1180. Back number 140, weight will be 1380. Back number 142, weight is 1095. Back number 145, weight is 1093. Back number 146, the weight is 1162. And back number 147, weight is 1336.
there's definitely some differences in this class and uh, Matt and I are not going to apologize for taking a little more time we're just trying to set a little bit of a pace but at the same time we you know we want to get through these things quickly and and fashionably but at the same time you know we want to give a fair shake and analyze these things to the fullest that we can so when we back and analyze these guys and uh, you know my place the other end of this class and I work this top end uh, there's definitely some differences here and and, it, and it's give or take and I'm gonna be the first to tell you that uh, you go back there to the stalls and evaluate these things and visit with the breeders um, you know, it, it's Matt and I's day. We're the ones out here. We're making that decision. But I, I strongly, strongly encourage you all to take time, visit with these guys, and, and figure out the ones that are going to work for you. The calf that we're going to start with, when you get up and get behind this guy, there, there's a lot of top shape. There's a lot of mass to him. And, and we like that about him. I'll be the first to tell you none of these top three are perfect. I'd like to change a few things about each one of them. Uh, but, the, but there's some mass. There's some smoothness to this one. We like the way his chest lays in. He's tighter in that sheath, and we like that about him. Get picky on him. We sure wish we could give him a bigger foot, make him just a little more comfortable on those rear wheels. Uh, but still, just, just the overall mass and neatness to him allows him to win this class. The bull that we put second, we sure enough like him for a lot of reasons. I like the way he sits down at the ground. I like the cushion and softness that he has and that just uh, if we could clean him up in that chest floor clean him up in that sheath just ever so slightly I think it makes for a pretty comparable to top pair to talk about this calf that's third I'll be the first to tell you when he hit the ring he stops right here he's the kind Matt and I like he's got a profile he's got some extension we just wish we could give more of everything to this guy. If we could just stout him up, give him a little bit more power, give him a little more mass, I think he's more competitive. But where he really comes down and gets beat for us today, when he stops, I mean, he sits down on that foot nicely, and we like that. But when we put him in motion, he struggles today on that back end. I don't think it's a long-term problem by no means. I think, you do, you know, when we analyze these calves, there are some first-time jitters, not for exhibitors or judges, but also these calves, you know that they they get a little bit tense and I think that might be his issue but he wants to pop on that pasture and every little bit wish we could fix that about him and get him to relax that top as he goes but still an interesting top three to start with uh, let's give them a round of applause Well, congratulations here in Class 6B. First place will go to back number 147, Chestnut Jagger 620, exhibited by Dawson Greg Johnson of Pipestone, Minnesota. Second place will go to K-Bar D West Point 14H, exhibited by K-Bar D of Redmond, Oregon. Third place will go to SCC WF DiMaggio 021, exhibited by Sturtzbach Cattle Company, Louisville, Ohio. Fourth place will go to SNR Chaps J006, exhibited by Jared Ratcliffe of Weston, Wisconsin. Fifth place will go to Richburg Primo 032, exhibited by 70 Cattle Company LLC, Amarillo, Texas. Sixth place will go to Sagebrush Luke 4020, exhibited by Wendell Custer of Cushing, Oklahoma. Seventh place will go to Back number 146, BM First Class, 019500, exhibited by Gold Buckle Angus, Ottawa, Kansas. Next class in will be class 7B, back number 148. Weight on that bull will be 1106, back number 150, 1130, back number 153, 1188, back number 155, 1218, and back number 160, 1251.
Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome over here to the left ring. We're going to be showing the Pold Herefords and their Horn Hereford Bulls and Bull Calves. We're excited to be here today and have a great show for you in that line. Our judge today evaluating the cattle is Mr. Brandon Callis. Brandon lives in Minko, Oklahoma, and his current career, he is actually the competitive teams coordinator at Redlands Community College over in El Reno, Oklahoma. Brandon received his BS from Texas A&M and then moved up to Kansas State University where he completed his master's. He was on some competitive judging teams, I know that for a fact. He, his wife is Kelly and he has one son, Braden, and he has two daughters, Kylie and Cambria. They own BKC Livestock and raise Simital and Simital Influence cattle. Let's put our hands together and welcome Brandon here to the Hereford and Pole Hereford Show. Put your hands together, folks. First end of the ring is Class 1 Pole Spring Bull Calves. These range in age from April 3rd to April 22nd, 2020. We get these February Angus Bull Calves over here on this side of the ring uh, for this class. Uh, pretty straightforward. This calf wins this class on the terms of the way he moves across the ground. That's the thing that puts him at the top of this class. Uh, he's got some awfully good qualities to him. He's got, some, got a profile. He's got a look to him. But he wins this class simply when you look at him and evaluate this bull from the hawk down. We like the way he sits when he stands. You put him in motion. He's got a, plenty of length and stride to him. He's perfectly good at the ground when you talk about terms of flex and the way he can reach out and go. And when he wins the class, like I said, just on hands of terms of structure and getting out and go. They kept that we have in second. Man, I really like him. Well, uh, you know, he stands here and profiles. Uh, he's got that extension. He's got that levelness of hip. He's got a lot of really good qualities to him. We just wish we could free this guy up there at the ground. He gets out and goes. He, he gets up on those toes a little bit on that rear end, and then that's what gets him beat. But still, there's just an awfully lot of good to that bull. Just wish we could free him up as he gets out and goes. We get down to these other three. There's definitely some differences. Just, uh, you know, we find a gift that slides in here to third. You know, he's got some look to him. We like the way he lays in at that shoulder. Just wish we could open him up. Open him up in that heart shape and that rib shape. Make him a little bit deeper to get him to go any higher. We get these other two back here at this end, our, our fourth place bull. We, he just gives up a little bit of that look, that pizzazz for us. And then we round out the class with one that's got a lot of extension. We like that about him. You know, a bigger statured bull just needs to be softened up, just needs to be deeper in his heart and his flank to go any higher. Nice set of bulls. Let's give those guys a round of applause, please. Well, congratulations in Class 7B here in your Angus ring. First place will go to back number 153, Collison Pure Alpha, exhibited by Kara Collison, Rockwell City, Iowa. Second place will go to back number 155, EXAR Expressive, 0681B, exhibited by Express, Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Third place will go to back number 150, VZR 24, Carrot. 2012, exhibited by Ryan and Bridget Van Zee, Sioux City, I Sioux Center, Iowa. Fourth place will go to back number 148, VZR 24 Carat 2014, exhibited by Ryan and Bridget Van Zee, Sioux Center, Iowa. And in fifth place, back number 160, HERB locked and loaded 0302. Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, definitely uh, 
A big, big blessing. Uh, honor to, to be asked to come out here and, and sort these Herefords for a few days. And uh, this class, again, it brings it to you. There's three different kinds of good in here, whether you look on paper or look out here. And just a lot of little different things and figuring where you're the most comfortable at. This one we're going to start with. I'd be the first to admit I, I want to change him up front in his front skeleton and redesign his shoulders just to shade. Uh, and for some, he may be a little quick, I guess, in terms of his pattern. But to me, that one puts himself to the best together in terms of his body, the type of muscle he has in terms of his smoothness. Sets really good on his rear leg and in his rear feet and where they sit there. And there's still some balance to that one. I still respect that one on paper quite a bit as well. One here in second, he's got pieces right now. Uh, huge hip, huge back, really, really long and extended, neat in his neck. And yeah, you can ding him a little bit on paper in terms of birth weight, but I'll let you more so decide what to do that if you decide to breed to him. My concern today, he's a little harder in his body and he wants to tiptoe out here a little bit and not be as secure in his structure and uh, for me to be comfortable with him, particularly off of his rear step. One run here in third, if you can, if he's stout enough for you, if that one's open up enough for you, you could say, boy, from the side, that's the one you need to draw into. And I wouldn't argue with you a whole lot and thought about it a lot myself, but I really like to try to make cattle as, as dimensional, but keep it all organized and together. To me, that one gets just a touch narrow chested, greener there in his full rib and just needs more top shape for me to run with those two up ahead of him. But that's three nice bulls to start a bull show off. Thank you, Judge Callis. Winning our first class of polled Hereford bulls is entry 108 PCC the Deuce 0295H, exhibited by Joe Patrick. His weight was 1055. Second place is entry 106 MMM VH7 and 7H44, exhibited by Ashley Moore, with a live weight of 1095. Third place in that class is entry 102, BCH Cochise 12, and exhibited by Clay Huber, and his weight was 1028. We'll now be bringing in class two, Polt Hereford Bull Calves, age range of March 10th through March 30th, 2020. And following this bull class, we'll go right into our spring bull calf division. Over here in your Angus ring, currently in the ring is class 8B. Weights on these bulls are as follows. Back number 163, weight is 1242. Back number 164, 1300. Back number 165, 1512. Back number 166, 1184. Back number 167, 1429. Back number 173, 1198. Back number 178, 1327. And back number 181, 1295. This will be your final class before our next division champions.
At this time, we'd like to introduce a few of our National Junior Angus Board of Directors. Those are our youth that are in the ring wearing the green coats on the Angus side. Nick Pullman is your chairman from Prairie Grove, Arkansas. He's a sophomore at the University of Arkansas, double majoring in biochemistry and animal science with a pre-med option. Megan Pellin, the foundation director from Frederick, Maryland, a junior at Kansas State University, majoring in animal science. Alex Cazatorto, director from Olath, Kansas, a sophomore at Texas A&M, majoring in animal science. Walker McDermott, director from Wyota, Iowa, a junior at Iowa State majoring in Ag Communications and Ag Studies. Josh Jasper, director from Lexington, Kentucky, an upcoming auctioneer and real estate agent. And Garrett Schuring, director from Thompson, Missouri, a freshman at Moberly Area Community College majoring in Ag Business and Animal Science. For those of you sitting ringside, please put your hands together and thank our junior board that has been out here in the ring helping us with all of our shows today, and we'll see them again tomorrow. Over here on the Angus side, as we get into these January bulls, you know, we're, we're past that, that baby calf look, but we're not at that big mature look either. You know, these guys are yearling bulls, I think, from top to end. And as you look at these things, they, they've done what they need to do. They, they've hit that point in their life that they, they need to start looking like men, and they're doing that. And, and, and we like all these bulls for different reasons. But as a whole, you know, th this class kind of matches up on those terms for us. But we find a, a bull up here to start this class that, uh, you know, we like this guy. I mean, there's a lot of extension to this one. He's flat in that shoulder. He's extended up in that front end. He's really smooth in his overall makeup. Not the stoutest one out here today, but he doesn't need to be. He's got enough other pieces. And you look at him on paper and you look at some of the, the weight data, you know, uh, the, this one, uh, length is in weight and, and he's got that. But more importantly than that, you put him in motion, he's right at the ground and he just marks all those boxes for us to start this class. A bull that comes next. Uh, here's one that, man, we really appreciate that foot and bone work underneath him. I mean, a big old foot, got some spread between those toes. We appreciate that about him. You know, when comparing him to that class winner, we just like to lengthen him out. Maybe extend that front end just a little bit. Maybe tuck that shoulder in just a little bit more uh, to be more competitive, but still an awfully good bull. The young, man bull, young man's bull that we find to go third. You know, he, here's kind of a, a big old burly dude that's, that, that's got plenty of rib and body to him. We appreciate that about him. He just gets a little bit plainer. He's just plainer up in that overall front end, but a nice calf to find his way into the third. Matt went ahead and placed the other end of this class and certainly some differences in there. You know, we've got one that's coming here and forth. That, you know, there's a lot of bull there, no doubt. You can look at that paperwork and, and weights the telltale sign there. For us to get him more competitive, he's exceeding that maturity growth pattern a little too fast for us. And then we just get into either some structural issues or overall mass and power to be placed any higher. Let's give these guys a round of applause, a good set of bulls. Well, congratulations here in your Angus Ring, Class 8B. First place to go to back number 178, Boyd Rainfall 0002, exhibited by Boyd Beef Cattle of Mazelik, Kentucky. Second place to go to back number 173, DAJS, the Specialist 030, exhibited by Katie Satry, Montague, Texas. Third place to go to back number 181, Jensen Virtual 003, FAF, FCC, exhibited by Kel Allen Jensen, Plainfield, Iowa. Fourth place to go to back number 165, FAR, Cowboy Logic 0105, exhibited by Fry Angus Ranch, Granville, North Dakota. Fifth place to go to back number 167, Henning Fresh Prince 0005, exhibited by Evan Henning. Janeville, Iowa, or I'm sorry, Wisconsin. Sixth place in that class will go to back number 163, Schroeder Classic, exhibited by Doug and Glenda Schroeder, Clarence, Iowa, Dan A. Wertherman, Durant, Iowa, and Allen and Pat Wertherman, Stockton, Iowa. Seventh place went to back number 164, Chestnut Point Taken, 180 exhibited by Chestnut Angus Farm, 
Pipestone, Minnesota. And eighth place in that class will go to back number 166, EXAR Mentor 0341B, exhibited by Express, Ran Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Now currently in your Angus ring will be the selection of our champion reserve here in your winter bull calf division. In this division, your first place out of your first class was exhibited by Dawson Greg Johnson, Pipestone, Minnesota. Out of Class 7B, first place was exhibited by Kara Collison, Rockwell City, Iowa. And first place out of Class 8, 8B, exhibited by Boyd Beef Farm, Beef Cattle, Mazelik, Kentucky. Another powerful class of, of Herford Bulls we have over here. And again, very deep. And I, I don't want to be sound too critical on these things today. Uh, I know people are still utilizing these. And, and again, take it as a grain of salt, if you will, if it's working for you. Just kind of how I'm seeing them today. But it gets a little uh, co competitive up here in these top three or four. Just exactly what you want to fall for. To me, this one just put the best compliment of being a beef bull, being rugged, having some body to him, some testicles to him, big hip, big back, but yet they're still some balance there's still some symmetry to that bull and then structurally to me that bull's sound and still athletic enough out here you get him on the move i like to still modify his structure just as far as making him a, a unique or a really really good one i change his hind leg design just a shade set his hip and tail head at him a little differently but function muscle body things that we like to see in bulls i think he does well not gonna lie if this one just moved a little more accurate for me off of his rear two he's winning the class i, I like that one's look i like that one's presence he starts to take things to another level in terms of his neck set and where it's put on him, his body shape, the kind of muscle he has. I found a lot of really neat use for this bull just today. You can tell he's either favoring his left hind leg or just pushing a little more on his right hind leg than he needs to. I like to free him up and just make him a little more accurate there in that step. Bull, we come here next. I like his look. I like his presence. There's a lot of good between that bull. From the ground up, though, I want to stouten him up in his hoof and his feet. I want to change his shoulder angle just a shade there as well to make him more relaxed more appropriate when he gets out on the go, but still a lot of good and presence and quality to that bull. Again, very practical, very useful one here. Long strided. It's got some length of body. He's got some muscle shape. Just a little plainer maybe in the way he can constructed. Not as neat out of his rear leg in the way he utilizes it. Big husky one that comes next. A lot of bone, a lot of hip, a lot of width to him. Just not as constructed in his middle as, much, as well as I like him to be. Want to just blend him together. A neat, promising bull here. Uh, again, I like his length of body. I like his look up for Today, he looks just a little drier in his body. I want to make him all, more opened up and quite a bit bolder all the way through. Big, big stout rascal here. Makes sense, though, when you look on paper. You do get just a little more concerned in terms of his birth weight. And then one here, he's smooth, he's deep, just runs a little bit out of power here within this class. But nice competitive set of bulls. Congratulations, winning class two in the Hereford Bull Show over here is entry 117, WORR 35B, Big Shooter 559H, exhibited by Jarrett Shane of Worrell Mason, Texas. Bull weighed 1124. Second place is entry 118, CH Ruthless 007, exhibited by Curry Herefords, live weight of 1030. Third place is entry 112, BR Kingston H028, exhibited by Barber Ranch, live weight of 963. Fourth place, entry 116, DCF 02X PayPal 011H, exhibited by Dry Creek Farm, live weight of 1182. Fifth place, entry 114, CSC ROF 4003 Pearl Snap 51H, exhibited by Clancy Sweatman of Eastman, Illinois. Well, live weight of 1167. Sixth place, entry 113, ECR WF Gus 058, exhibited by Fawcett's Elm Creek Ranch from Ree Heights, South Dakota. Live weight of 976. Seventh place, entry 109, SLC Mr. Harley HM16, exhibited by Samantha Lynn Campbell of Eaton, Colorado. Live weight of 1106. And eighth place was entry 111, LF366, Ringo 0091, exhibited by Lorenzen Farm of Chrisman, Illinois, live weight of 1033. If you're following along your programs, those placings are 7, 8, 3, 6, 5, scratch, 4, 
one, and two. We're now exhibiting for our spring bull calf champion and reserve breed champion. Coming out of class one was PCC the Deuce, exhibited by Joe Patrick of Sarcoxie, Missouri. And coming out of class two, our class winner was WORR 35B Big Shooter, exhibited by Jarrett Shane Worrell of Mason, Texas. Not going to prolong the time here. I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> nice division of bulls here. A uh, good set of them. But again, you get your mind made up. It's made up. I like this pair of bulls that come out of that second class. We're going to keep them together. They'll represent this division. Congratulations to you. I'm going to make sure that that's the last time Callis beats me to the mic or beats me any time if I have my choice at it. We get over here in this division on the on the bull show. Uh, you know, Matt and I sat over here and we discuss and and cuss and discuss these guys. And there's definitely some differences. The the two that we found that we're going to use for this division will be the first to admit that you know they're not, they're not I identical they don't match but they're darn sure the two that for the qualities that, that, that they have and what we like about them are the two that we're going to run out there and you know they'd be the ones we go breed bulls to or breed cows to you know they're the kind that uh, you know maybe not match at the uh, perfectly to a t but they're darn sure they just, they have the most quality when you put those in, in in consideration and you add up that overall quality of what's out here for this division an awfully good set of bulls matt will go out and select your grand reserve for this division Back over on our Hereford side, division champion came out of class two, WORR 39B, big shooter, exhibited by Jarrett Shane Worrell of Mason, Texas. Our reserve division was CH Ruthless 007, exhibited by Curry Herefords. We're now bringing in class three, spring bull calves, age April 2nd through April 23rd of 2020. Well, congratulations over here on the Angus side in your winter bull calf division. Your champion will go to back number 153, weighing 1188. Collison Pure Alpha, exhibited by Kara Collison, Rockwell City, Iowa. And reserve champion will go to back number 178, Boyd Rainfall 0002, exhibited by Boyd Beef Cattle, Maislick, Kentucky, weighing 1327. Now in your Angus ring, we'll look for class 9B. Weights are as follows, back number 182, 1265, and back number 183, 1316. would like to remind everybody watching the Hereford side of the arena that we will be alternating classes starting out with that polled class and then now we're on the Horn Spring Bull Calves aged April 2nd through April 23rd. Just two entries over here on this side, but uh, you know, two bulls that we we like for different reasons. Uh, the bull we're going to go ahead and start with, you know, here's one that uh, you put him in motion. He stays truer in that top. He's softer at the ground, and he's stronger and you know leveler out of that hip. And we like him for those reasons. He's extended. He's really clean underneath. We appreciate him for for a number of reasons. Just a darn good bull to start this class. The young ladies that comes next, we appreciate that weight per day of age about him. We appreciate that center dimension to him, but one that just struggles and starts to roll up in that top as we'll put him in motion. Wish we could fix that about him, but still two nice bulls for this age. Let's give them a round of applause.
Well, congratulations over here in your Angus Ring Class 9B. First place is going to go to back number 182, DAJS Primo's Reflection 854, exhibited by Katie Satry, Montague, Texas. Second place will go to back number 183, Reco Sampson 9527, exhibited by Reco Ranch of Guthrie, Oklahoma. Now in your Angus Ring will be Class 10B. Weights on the following bowls are back number 190, 1065, back number 192, 1738, back number 195, 1656, and back number 196, 1621. After this class, we will be selecting your division champion reserve for our senior bull calves. Another good class, and again, a lot of variations and differences. But when they walk in, I think these two separate uh, pretty quick. Uh, as far as they get in your eye, they've got some some mass and volume to them, but yet still some quality. Uh, I think the unique thing about this, when we get back out here, whether they're on paper or live, to me, this is our, our best bull, most consistent in the way he puts things together. Good from the outline. I like his squareness of his top and the goodness of his hip. I like where his head and neck set. There's still some body dimension to that bull, and it's still one that's condition-wise, pretty good uh, in terms of his composition. He's deceiving, though. He's one that's smooth muscle. You get behind him, there's a whole lot of width to that guy still and some uh, real, 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 real volume to him and still handles his feet and legs quite nicely. So nice bull that ends up leading off this particular class. What we have here in second, I like his softness of rib. I like his length of stride. And again, he's not wanting to cooperate the most, but you can still his com see his comfort of movement is there. I want to open that bull up when you get right in behind him, though, and square him up out of his pins maybe there just a shade for me, a punch more just shape to that bull. But boy, I like his softness. I like his ruggedness at the ground. This next two, I honestly go back and forth. And yes, there's a whole lot more bull here in third in terms of your squareness and shape. I want to change his shoulder angle, maybe make him better off his back leg. And that's where I love this bull next and fourth. He's skinny. He's green, uh, you know, but that's the best back leg movement of the entire class. I just wish there was more from there forward to go along with him to make him more competitive today. Just a little young and green and skinny behind. I still like the softness and easy fleshing look of the one that comes here next. Just want to change him off his rear skeleton a touch more for me, moderate him and make him a little neater there in his spine and his hip. But good class of bulls. Congratulations. Placing in class three Horn Spring Bull Kevs. First place goes to entry 124 BR ER Big Country 007, exhibited by Barber Ranch of Channing, Texas, and Edwards Ranch of May, Texas. His live weight today was 1118. Second place is entry 123 Purple Sleepy Joe 80H, exhibited by Purple Rain Cattle Company, Tulin, Illinois, live weight of 942. Third place is entry 127 W4 8130 Bankroll 101H. Exhibited by W4 Ranch, Morgan, Texas. Today's weight was 970. Exhibitor number 126 had our fourth place, ECR Copper 0367. Exhibited by Fossus Elm Creek Ranch, of Bree Heights, South Dakota. Today's weight was 853. Rounding out our class is entry 125, placing fifth place. S Payday 075. Exhibited by Sidwell Herford's Car, Colorado. Live weight today of 1049. Following your programs, the lineup is two, one, five, four, and three. We're now in class four, Horn Spring Bull Calves, those ranging in age from March 8th through March 28th of 2020. Over here on the Angus side, <clears throat> excuse me, over here on the Angus side, we get into these September bulls. Um, you know, something I'm going to bring up, Matt and I haven't really talked about, uh, and something that I know in Matt the way I do, and, and, you know, obviously myself, I don't care whether we're evaluating bulls or whether we're evaluating females. Uh, this is an age group that I like. 
I, I like fall borns. I, I think when you look at these bulls, you know, I, I talked about some of those Januaries earlier about getting past that calf look, but, but not uh, quite to that extreme masculine mature look as some of them older ones that we'll see here in a little bit. I think they, it's an age group as a whole. Yeah, no matter what breed we talk about, that they still have some youthfulness to them. They still possess the good qualities, those that have them, and, and they just need to look at. And I think this one that starts this class does that for us. We like this guy quite a bit. When he stops and he profiles, uh, we're, we're one that's big on look. You know, uh, that, that's kind of the backbone of our program. They, they've got to have some look and they've got to move, and this guy does that. We don't need to describe all the unique features about him to a T. Just simply state the fact that he's a good one, and he wins this class quite handily. Uh, an awfully good one to start this class. The bull that we have in second, we love that center dimension of this guy. You know, you talk about some rib and some body to him. We really like that about him. He's got some good footwork and, and, and bone underneath him. We appreciate that. If this guy could just get out and move a little bit better when you talk about him in the terms of his top, I think, you know, he could be more competitive. But he wants to roll up in that top a little bit for us, and, and that's a concern. But a big testicular, big testicle bull that's big center bodied, and we appreciate that about him. The other two, when we get down here, I think it splits the differences between the two of them when you evaluate them on the front end. This third place bull, we like the way he lays in at that shoulder and the way he can just move out and function off of that front end compared to the one that rounds out our class. One that's a little bit steep in that shoulder for us today, but a nice set of bulls with an awfully good one to start that class. Let's give them a round of applause. Well, congratulations here in your Angus ring. Class 10B, first place will go to back number 190, MC Roundtable 9088, exhibited by Zachary McCall of Greenville, Virginia, and Sunrise Sunset Farm of Williamsburg, Indiana. Second place in that class will go to back number 192, Vision Southern Charm 9082, exhibited by Austin Wieselmeyer of Amherst, Colorado. Third place, we'll go to back number 196, MES Music Man 903650, exhibited by Marjorie Ellis Adowski of Eagleville, Missouri. And fourth place in that class, we'll go to back number 195, Hearts Lucky Charm 031Y731, exhibited by Elsie Hannah Rogers of Wilton, Iowa. At this time, we will be bringing in your first and seconds to select a champion and reserve here in your senior bull calf division. Out of class 9B, first place exhibited by Katie Satry, and 10B, first place exhibited by Zachary McCall. Jason said these uh, fall bulls are intriguing. Uh, they're right in the middle point of their life. You know, they're not the fancy little calves and they're not the big bulls that we're going to see later. But uh, this is our kind right here. Uh, this is the, the type and kind that we're going to look for the rest of the day and tomorrow. We're going to use this bull and the second place to him to win this division. Thank you. Well, congratulations in your Angus ring. Your champion senior bull calf will be exhibited by Zachary McCall and Sunrise Sunset Farm with MC Roundtable 9088. And reserve champion senior bull calf will go to Austin Wieselmeyer Amherst, Colorado with Vision Southern Charm 9082. Both of those bulls came to you out of Class 10B. Another pretty solid class of bulls here. And again, two more powerful bulls that maybe are built a little more uh, to my liking in terms of their, their width and, and shape. And then you put them in the motion. And for me, it's not close in terms of just the angularity, uh, the way this one puts himself together. I, I like his look up front. That's a masculine stout skull bull, but that still lays into his shoulder in the right manner. Head and neck comes out of the top of his shoulder in the right manner. I like where his knee uh, and curvature is there up front. Really, really neat back leg in this bull. And you 
you get in behind him, big square upper pin and hip in this guy, and still one again, a little greener uh, there in terms of his condition, and I don't, I don't mind that because he still has something to go along with it. He's probably not as wide base from behind as the bull here in second. I'm not sure he needs to be. A lot of power, a lot of shape in this bull here in second. Very, very expressive in terms of his muscle. I mean, he starts big from behind his shoulder and goes all the way back in terms of his stoutness. And again, some might have a problem with his size, but I don't. I don't mind his moderate type there. For me, more so, it's his front skeleton. I wanted to relax him there in terms of his knee and his shoulder, lay it back on his body just in a little more appropriate manner. A lot of give and take between these next two. Both bulls got some length of spine. Really, all three that are left have some length of spine and some stretch to them. This bull seems to come just a little bolder and stouter maybe up top, but wants to close up down low just to shade more bull here next. Probably a prettier made bull, if we will. It's got some length to him. I just want to stouten him up and make him just a little more rugged all the way through. Bull will close is probably as good numbered, particularly in the Cavanese department of any of them in here. I just want to see that bull redesign just a shade out of his hip, maybe accommodate himself just a little neater there underneath in terms of his body and his chest floor there as well. But that's a good solid set of bulls. Congratulations, winning class two in the Horn Hereford Bull Show. Entry 137, FTZS Fearless 002, exhibited by Fitz Genetics of Perry, Oklahoma. He weighed 1,238 this morning. Our second place is entry 135, KCW Cotton's Dutton 310H, exhibited by Caden Wilson of Creston, Iowa. His weight this morning was 1,113. Third place is entry 132, SHF Southall 82H, exhibited by Carson Fahey of New Windsor, Maryland. Live weight this morning was 1,268. Fourth place, entry 131, GCS Highlight 008, exhibited by Gene and Cindy Stillon of Cheyenne, Wyoming. This morning's weight was 1,098. And fifth place was entry 130, S Yellowstone 028, Sidwell Herefords of Colorado. This morning's weight was 1084. If you're following along in your programs on class two, class, I'm sorry, of class four, that was scratch, and scratch, scratch, five, four, three, two, and one. We're now exhibiting for our Horned Hereford Champion Spring Bull Calf and Reserve Spring Bull Calf. Coming out of class three was BRER Big Country 007, exhibited by Barber Ranch and Edward Ranch from Texas. He weighed 1,118. Exhibiting from class four was entry 137, Fitz Fearless 002H, exhibited by Fitz Genetics, and his weight was 1,238. Currently over here in your Angus ring is class 12B. There's one entry in this class, back number 201. Weight on that bull is 2090. Tried to get Matt to talk this one because this is one I know he couldn't screw up with uh, having a single entry out here, but may maybe the next single entry we'll get him to do it. But uh, it, it, you know, uh, it, getting into these older bulls, uh, you know, it, it's a little bit of a passion of my wife Jenny and I to to work these older bulls, to to feed these guys, to haul them up and down the road. Uh, it's something we like. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a single entry out here, but I think one that can stand some competition. Uh, no need in describing him to a T. I think those of you sitting in the stands can see the see the goods of this guy. You know, plenty of rib, plenty of body to him. Um, good feet and legs underneath him. Just an all-around good type of breeding bull. Look forward to seeing him back for division. Well, congratulations over here in your Angus ring. First place will go to back number 201, Lakeview Sandstone, 9229, exhibited by Lakeview Angus, Mead, Colorado. At this time, we'll now be looking for class 13B here in your Angus ring, our final class before we select our division champions in your intermediate bull division. Back number 203 weighs 2,100. Back number 204, weight is 2258. And back number 205 is 1806. 
Got a really good division here, very deep, and you can tell with the seconds here, there's some quality uh, amongst this group. I think these two are close enough, but yet different enough, we should talk about them just a, a bit. This one out of this first class, again, I like how neat he is up front when he's there on the standstill, opens up very, very well in terms of his body, and there's some real true meat and muscle uh, in this guy in terms of shape and, and expression there as well. Length of stride is still very, very good. If you're going to pick and go back and forth between the two, uh, you know, you may modify him out of his hip in the way he drives his hawk ever so slightly when he's on the move there. Uh, but that's still one that, boy, uh, puts a lot of good together. And then if you're going to give one advantage on paper, he probably has that slight advantage in, in particular in terms of his, his birth numbers. Bull here that comes out of the second class, maybe he comes to us with a little extra. And you got to study through the hair just a little bit. But I think when you look at these two at the ground, I like his foot shape. I like his pasture angle there as well. That's a masculine, rugged guy that, like I said, he still parks his head and neck at the right spot in terms of where his shoulder lays onto his body there as well. Big and square out of his hip. I like the composition uh, of both of these bulls. And if you're going back and forth between these two and you get right in behind them, maybe he doesn't stay as, as extra wide at his base as what the one out of the first class does, but he probably handles the length of his hip and the way his pin set and his hawk design just a shade better. So I'm being picky. You can go back and forth. I think both these bulls are very, very, very quality bulls. I love to just take the halters off of them, turn them loose, and see what they really do, what's what's them fighting things and what's the uh, really belongs to them. But probably the one that just hits me a little more with a little bit of the, more of the extras is the one out of that second class for me. He's going to be our champion in this division. Going to use that bull out of that first class to be reserved. But that's a nice pair of bulls. Congratulations, our division champion in the Horn Hereford Spring Bull Calf is entry 137 Fitz, 1238 this morning. Our reserve division champion comes out of class three, entry 124 BRER Big Country 007, exhibited by Barber Ranch, Channing, Texas, and Edward Edwards Ranch of May, Texas, weighing 1118. Now be bringing in class five, Pole Junior Bull Calves, born February 3rd through February 26th of 2020.
this class of bulls out here. Uh, the one we find to logically start this class, you know, he, he's got the look for us. When this guy's parked there, he profiles. He ties in so good at that next shoulder junction for us. He's upheaded. He's clean up in that front end. We like him when you look at him from there on back. You know, he, he's so level out of that hip. He holds true to himself as he gets out and goes. Uh, just an awfully good one to go ahead and start this class. Our challenging two are these here in second and third. Uh, a lot of good things about these guys. Some differences, obviously, in person, but some differences when you look at them in paper. It comes down to there's just more bull here. Uh, more weight per day of age, you know, more muscle. Uh, he, he's thicker, he's stouter, and we appreciate that about him. I will admit, you know, I, I, I struggle with this guy when we put him in motion. Uh, he can get out and go, but he's kind of a little bit all over the place when he gets outside himself and on those rear wheels and wants to roll on that front end, and I think that that's due to the, to the point of those shoulders and the, and the spread that's in there. But the muscle and mass allows him to slide into that second spot. You know, you talk about a smooth shoulder, uh, a long-sided type of bull to go third. We like that about him. We just wish we could give him, give him more of it, you know, we wish we'd give him more top, give him more hip, give him more lower stifle, uh, but still an awfully good bull. Uh, interesting trio of bulls here. I'm going to give them a round of applause. Well, congratulations in your Angus ring. Class 13B, first place to go to back number 203. Hill Valley Reckoning 931, exhibited by Samuel Paul Henderson, East Troy, Wisconsin. Second place to go to back number 204, Hortzman Secret Society 961G, exhibited by Larry and Joe Hortzman, West Lafayette, Indiana, and Ridge Cattle Company of Nancy, Kentucky. Third place in that class will go to back number 205, K Bar D, Bulldozer. 47G exhibited by K Bar D of Redmond, Oregon. At this time in your Angus ring, we'll be bringing in your first and seconds to select a champion reserve out of your intermediate bull division. Coming in out of class 12B, first place was exhibited by Lakeview Angus, Mead, Colorado. And first place out of class 13B, exhibited by Samuel Paul Henderson, East Troy, Wisconsin. Here on the Angus side, uh, you know, with, with the numbers hadn't been really high in this particular division, but uh, the quality has sure been there. Uh, once again, we're going to go with a bull that fits me and Jason. Uh, this bull here is just so upheaded and, uh, you know, it's so good made. Uh, this is our kind. We're going to stick, try and stick true to that kind, and we're going to use a second for reserve. Well, congratulations in your Angus ring and in your intermediate bull division. Your champion is going to be exhibited by Samuel Paul Henderson, East Troy, Wisconsin, Hill Valley Reckoning, 931. And reserve champion intermediate bull is going to go to Hortzman Secret Society, 961G, exhibited by Larry and Joe Hortzman, West Lafayette, Indiana, and Ridge Cattle Company, Nancy, Kentucky. At this time, we'll be bringing in class 14B here in your Angus ring. The weights are as follows. Back number 206, weight is 2029. Back number 207, 2064. And back number 210, 2187.
those of you joining us ringside, we'd like to remind you that the 82nd Annual National Angus Bull Sale will take place this afternoon at 1 o'clock right next door in the Super Barn Sale Arena. Bulls will be on display starting at 1130. You may pick up a sale catalog at the Angus booth and visit with the American Angus Association Regional Managers if you have any questions. Once again, that's the National Angus Bull Sale starting at 1 o'clock right next door in the Super Barn Sale Arena. find a pretty logical class winner for us when you just simply evaluate him on hoof. And, uh, you know, th this is a bull that's got that profile look for us. He's high at the point of that shoulder. He's smooth when you look at him when you evaluate him from there on back. You know, level top, good out of his hip, sits down good in that tail head. Just, in, you know, the, the, the quality factor. Uh, not to overemphasize that, but there's just more true quality to that bull that wins this class. When we get into these other two, you know, the, once again, uh, you know, we encourage everyone to go back and visit with these breeders because there, there's definitely some bulls out here that, that haven't rose to the top end of this class that could be used in some programs. They just to, These two just give up that overall quality to run with that class winner. Nice set of bulls. We can give them a round of applause. Well, congratulations in your Angus Ring Class 14B. First place went to back number 210, STCC Revolution 419, exhibited by St. Amont Cattle Company, Tryon, Oklahoma. Second place will go to back number 207, TRL Watch Appearance 9555, exhibited by Cornerstone Ranch Incorporated, Fort Sumner, New Mexico. Third place in that class, exhibited by 206, Cornerstone Ranch Incorporated, Fort Sumner, New Mexico. TRL, watch appearance, 9557. Really good class of bulls, and again, uh, lots of different kinds of, of good, and these two are not similar at all. Uh, and again, I, I think it, it invites, uh, I guess what's fun as a breeder, um, you get to make your decision after this is done today. Unfortunately for whoever's in second or third, mine becomes official today uh, for them, but that doesn't mean it's the, the ultimate answer. But these two, they're just different. I like them both. I like the quality of them both. But if I'm going to stay true to what my kind is, I like masculine bulls that have some shape, that have some range of motion athleticism to him to me this bull accomplishes that pretty well I do want to make it more consistent on his pasture and the way he sets I'm not going to deny that whatsoever you get in front of these bulls you get behind these bulls you get on top of these bulls there's quite a bit more bull there you stop and pose them that one still has a killer look this is the neat looking bull and if there's enough underneath the presentation for you you switch them because uh, I love his look I like his length like his presence that he has out here, very, very eye-catching. Still when it's sound, sets down on his back feet very, very well. A little more set to his hawk, maybe ducks under just a shade more for my liking. But for me personally, off either end, I like him a little stouter than what that guy is. But that's still a very, very useful and good bull. And then you get to this one. You say, well, why don't you use this one? This is the powerful one. Yes, he is. Lots of shape, lots of product, lots of punch in this guy. Heavy, heavy bone, big featured there as much, but almost too much to the point. He gets just a little coarse all the way through. I like to tidy that guy up and just conserve him just a shade more and maybe that helps him get out and go in a touch more comfortable fashion. I love the power and shape of this guy here. Very, very rugged. Just needs to be a little stouter there at the surface and at the ground for me personally. I like the softness and practicality of the one here next. Gets a little weaker in his spine. His loin takes away from his look and his presence is a touch. I like the look and presence of the one that, that rolls out here next. Just want to open him up quite a bit more. Very powerfully muscle one the young lady has. has got some shape to him. Just want to redesign him up front in terms of angulation of his shoulder and then the greener one here in the class that closes our class lots of length still has some turn and shape to his hip and his quarter just want to see him a little further along in terms of flesh to run with these guys that run out ahead of him but impressive class of bulls
Congratulations, winning class five is entry 147, CMCC High Point H002, exhibited by Moore Cattle Company in Bedell, Oklahoma, this morning's weight of 1162. Second place was entry 142, KCW Cotton's Yellowstone 220H, exhibited by Caden Wilson, Crescent, Iowa, today's weight was 1050. Third place is entry 141, SLC 561C, change of pace, 3H, exhibited by Corey Stump, Stump Landing Cattle from Columbia, Illinois. This morning's weight was 1,249. Fourth place is entry 146, 2TK, MKS 88X, 24B, Ribeye 6H, exhibited by Thomas Cade Boatman, Rockford, Illinois. This morning's weight was 1,246. Fifth place was entry 140, THA 66589, Ernest 004H, exhibited by Triple H Acres, Millers, Missouri, live weight this morning of 1173. Sixth place was entry 139, JDH AH Lincoln 106H, exhibited by Delaney Herfords Incorporated from Lake Bitten, Minnesota. This morning's weight was 1066. Seventh place was entry 157, Perks 5101 Commissioner 0009, exhibited by Perks Ranch, Rockford, Illinois. This morning's weight was 1236. And eighth place in that class was entry 149, SG, NMK, Kiwis Honor, H12, exhibited by Addison Kuntz, Thomas, Oklahoma. This morning's weight was 1126. Well, we obviously uh, got the microphone out here, so we've got to be the first ones to tell you that, that there's some differences in these two guys, and I think you can see that from the stands. And, and, and there's things about both of these bulls that we like quite a bit, but there's some things we like to change about both of them. And when you sit back and you analyze them and, and, and go to looking at them, uh, that this calf that we're, or the bull, I mean, they're not calves anymore. These guys are getting to be them bigger ones. But uh, the one we're going to go ahead and use to win, uh, that this guy is – is better in that front end, he's fresher in his overall makeup, he's flatter in that shoulder, and when you really analyze him, you know, and get behind him, he's truer and stronger in his hip, and we like that about him. I'll be the first to tell you, I, I really wish we could soften him up, open him up in that heart and that mm -hmm. rear flank a little bit, uh, but still, the, the length and dimension, and dimension and the profile that he brings out here allows him to win this class. The bull that we opt to put second. Now, here's one, we like that foot underneath him. Big old foot, big old bone. We, we appreciate that about him. Appreciate the fact that he's got more flank than that class winner. But he's not as fresh, you know, he's not as neat and as trim up in that front end. And, and you know, rolls out in the top of that point and that shoulder a little bit for us to go any higher. But still, two awfully good bulls. I encourage you to analyze them yourself and determine which one of those you like the best. But uh, differences in those two, but two darn good ones. Well, congratulations over here in your Angus ring coming out of class 15B. First place is exhibited by back number 213. Connolly Dykeman Prowess exhibited by Connolly Cattle of Sulphur, Oklahoma. Weight on that bull will be 2,000. Second place in that class goes to back number 215, Chap Erica S.A. No Limit G65, exhibited by Erica Chapman, Tipton, Iowa. Weight on that bull is 1985. Next class in the ring will be class 16B. This will be your final class before we select our division champion and reserve in your junior yearling division. Weights on these bulls are as follows. Back number 216 is 2100. Back number 217, 2145. Back number 219 is 2026. And back number 220 is 2404.
think an interesting trio of bulls that we bring here uh, within this class. And again, uh, they're good. Uh, not not any of them the same. Uh, just interesting. A uh, bull we bring out here to lead with uh, the inner judging coach in me wants to say he's not perfect enough on his left hind wheel and rides on the outside of his hoof wall. But then the breeder in me says, hey, that's never slowed one down much from getting on top of a cow. And so he's doing that pretty well. I like just the way he puts things together in terms of his extra shape and his width, the boldness of his body, again, where his neck sets in terms of his look and his posture there. And I think he's one for how he's built with that much muscle and that much width. He still handles himself adequately well. Yeah, you could modify him here in a place or two uh, in terms of just extra looseness, but I think, boy, he puts a lot of good together uh, in one particular package. These next two, uh, you could say there's some controversy between them because you look on paper and this one's numbers. I don't blow you away in terms of growth. Uh, I guess the way I try to approach that is I don't know what your cow herd looks like. Uh, I don't know what anybody's cow herd looks like, really, but I know you can interpret the growth how you want to. I know if we have range bulls that are built like him at the ground with that kind of looseness and that kind of flexibility, they don't go wrong. Uh, I like his shape. I like his width. Yeah, me too. I wish he was a little bigger in his kind. But we run out here next and third. If he moves good enough for you, you switch those two. That's where I ding him a little bit. He does have more growth and performance. I love his levelness out of his hip there. He's just a little shorter and choppier maybe in terms of his stride for me. This one was a hard one for me to figure out where he fit into the picture. I like his length. I like his extension there. When we get him out on the go, though, he gets plenty uncoordinated off of his rear two, rolls up in his back, and just doesn't look the same standing as he does on the move, at least from a comfort standpoint. Big middle stop made one here. Just gets a, a little uncoordinated for me, too, in terms of his structure, and he's just a little rounder uh, there off both ends. A long, long-sided bull that's got some length and extension to him. I just like to accommodate that with a little more softness and, and middle rib dimension, but really a nice set of bulls. We're here on our Angus side as we're starting to get into these big guys of the show. Uh, you know, we find a bull to start this class that, that that's that's complete. You know, he, uh, you know, a lot of good to him when you let evaluate him up there at that nose ring to the tip of that tail, uh, and we like those things about him. And where you know, there's some comparisons here in, in our first and seconds, and uh, you just try to see it, tell you how we see it. Uh, the front end of this bull that wins the class, when we talk in the in the terms of the shoulder going down to that knee, going down to the ground, and those feet, uh, is the difference. You know, we like the way this shoulder lays in a little bit better. Therefore, it ties into that knee a little bit and goes down to that foot, and he stays true as he goes out and goes and, and just sets, sets that foot down a little truer fashion for us. And he's more extended. You know, there's more extension to that bull. There's more length to him uh, when we talk about that spine and that he has. A, a, so th those reasons rise him to the top. The bull we've got in second, when he stopped and profiled and puts things together, you know, he's got some look and, and some desire for us when we're just on the terms of eye appeal. But when comparing him to that class winner, like to extend him out just a little bit, he gets a little bit compact for us, not in a a terrible way by no means, but just in comparison to that class winner. But more importantly, when you look at him at the ground and see him coming at you, this guy wants to turn out on those toes a little bit, which ties into that shoulder being a little bit steeper. These two that come next, you know, there's a lot of good to both of these guys. Uh, just some things we sure enough wish we could change and fix on this one. The bull that's in third, there, there's some good to this guy. We like a lot of things about him. He ties in at that next shoulder junction good for us. He's got some extension. Where we get concerned is when we simply evaluate this guy on his feet. He, he's, he's got some issues down there on his toes and wish we could kind of clean them up and fix them a little bit to, to make him more competitive. The bull that comes out next, he does have an advantage over that third place bull on the terms of his feet. He's got more circumference and truer on that foot. He just gives up overall dimension. When we put him in motion, he wants to get a little bit steep in that back rear pasture, wants to get a little bit tight in his top. I just wish we could soften him up and open him up to be placed any higher. Nice set of bulls with a good one to start that class. We can give those guys a round of applause, please. Another nice division here when we get into uh, these poles here. And again, really, really good set of them uh, as we turn back. Again, a really neat pair, a nicely presented pair that, that came out of that first class. I like the added meat and shape and product and width of the one that came out here. Again, not ideal in its pastures, but I don't think it's a, a functional problem necessarily either. And then the pair that came out of that next one probably couldn't be more opposite. Uh, I still like just the way this one ties together, how upstanding he is and still has some stoutness and squareness 
medicine foot and ruggedness to him. So a little interesting conversation. You know, you start to think about the one that's second in that first class. And although he's not my kind necessarily, there's still a lot of good value to that guy that I can see somebody using. For me, though, just two of them that look like turnout breeding bulls here on the front part of this line. And of those two, one of them just a little harder to pick holes in. So this class two is going to be our champion here in this division. Class one will end up reserve. All right, back over here on the Pole Hereford side. Winning our division was entry 153 BR GKB Everest H018, exhibited by Bryden Barber, Barber Ranch, and GKB Herefords of Waxahachie, Texas, and Channing, Texas. His line weight was 1,320. Our reserve division was entry 147 out of class five, CMCC High Point H002, exhibited by Moore Cattle Company in Bedell, Oklahoma, live weight this morning of 1,162. Well, congratulations over here in the Angus Ring, Class 16B. First place went to back number 220, EXAR Fundamental 9186B, weighing 2404, exhibited by Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Second place in that class went to back number 216, EXAR Expressway 1079B, exhibited by Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Weight on that bowl was 2100. Third place in that class goes to back number 217, VZR Diamond Jack 1905, weighing 2145, exhibited by Ryan and Bridget Van Zee, as well as Rowdy Van Zee, Sioux Center, Iowa. And fourth place in that class went to back number 219, Valley Oak Victory Lane 9009, exhibited by Valley Oaks Angus Oaks, Oak Grove, Missouri. Now in the Angus ring, we will be selecting your champion and reserve champion, Junior Yearling Bulls. Well, over here on the Angus side, uh, you know, once again, we have a, we have some really, really good bulls standing here. Uh, there's useful kinds for any cow herd and uh, any program here. You know, we're, uh, we, we know uh, we got a big day tomorrow, but uh, the bulls that we've seen today have been impressive. With that said, Jason's going to go get your grand reserve. And congratulations in your junior yearling bull division champion will go to back number 220, EXAR Fundamental 9186B, exhibited by Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Second place in that class, also exhibited by Express Angus Ranches. And reserve champion in that division also go to Express with EXAR Expressway 1079B. At this time in your Angus ring, we'll look to start with our next division, starting with Class 17B. This entry will weigh 2481. Catching up back over here on the Pold Hereford side. Results for class six, of course, 153 BRC GKB Everest H018 was your class winner and your division champion. Second place was entry 154 GKB Double Your Miles 0422, exhibited by Gary and Kathy Buckholtz of Waxahachie, Texas. Third place was entry 121 C1311 4013 Innisfail 0121, exhibited by Collier Herefords of Bruno, Idaho, with a live weight of 1401. Fourth place was entry 158 Perks 5101 Herdmaker 0004, exhibited by Perks Ranch, Rockford, Illinois, live weight of 1335. Fifth place was entry 156, So Blockbuster ET, Nelson Hershey Purebreds, weighing 1294 from Del Benito, Alberta. And sixth place was entry 155, SG KME, Honored Time H3, exhibited by Kyan Eck of Putnam, Oklahoma, live weight of 1355. Here in this class, again, a good pair of bulls. Again, just a little opposite in the way they're made. Probably sacrificing just a little power, though, but I like the flexibility and just the genuineness and usefulness of structure of the one we're going to lead off with. And again, it doesn't hurt on paper. You look at him in, in terms of a Cavanese and, and comfort there, uh, really, really good. But, boy, he gets out and goes very, very well. One here in second does have the edge up top in terms of just big, thick top shape, big hip in him. Just want to re-angle him in terms of his shoulder and his front skeleton. And make him get out and reach a little more comfortably, but a good pair of bulls.
here recently uh, with with the whole corona thing going on we we've seen our uh, cancellations and, and discouragement uh, in everything that we do and my daughter uh, a week or so ago they're supposed to have a basketball game and uh, the opposing team had too many health issues and couldn't hold that game and I just told her that one scared off the, the, the their team scared off the rest of the competition and that, that's why they didn't show up and I, I'm going to use that as an excuse uh, same sort of scenario for this deal uh, I think this guy scared off the competition um, it's a shame he's a single entry out here because this, this guy's good he can stand some competition you know you get these big bulls out here and uh, you know I made the statement earlier in one of those classes that, that how my wife and I and our family uh, love showing these big guys I mean it, it, it's a passion of ours it's something that we love to do uh, you know there's nothing for me better than uh, on a cool, crisp evening, uh, you know, getting ready for a Denver or this year the Congress, and, and out there feeding them guys and hearing those nose rings clank on that feed bunk and knowing that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, you know, that, that's something for me. You can call me a weirdo if you want, but that's something that kind of gets my motor going and is working on them big guys. And this guy resembles some of those things. Like I said, being repetitive, I, I wish he had some more competition because there's some good to this one. Uh, you know, for a big bull, he's fresh. He can get out and go. Uh, good hair coat to him, but, but you know, there, there's way more there than just hair. Just a, a high-quality, good type of bull. Uh, it would be interesting to see him back out here later. Congratulations to a good, really good one at single entry. Well, congratulations over here in your Angus Ring Class 17B first place. So go to back number 221, Silveras Harris Primal 8525, exhibited by Hara Angus Farm, Brookville, Ohio, and Silveras Brothers, Firebaugh, California. Weight on that bull is 2487. Next class in your Angus Ring will be Class 18B. Weight on this bull is 2325. Back over here on the Hereford side, Class 7 results for the Horned Hereford Junior Bull Calves. Those were age range of February 1st through February 26th. First place went to entry 164 VCR 711E Convoy 41H, exhibited by Valley Creek Ranch of Fairbury, Nebraska. Live weight this morning of 1078. Second place was entry 166 GH 150A Headliner 499, exhibited by Nelson Hershey Purebreds of Del Benita, Alberta. His weight this morning was 1270. Placings in that class were one, two, and scratch. We now have class eight, Horn Hereford Junior Bull Calves in there. We did move 161 down there for your program. So uh, we have 161, 169, 170, all the way through 172. If anybody has misplaced or lost their phone, we have had one turn in up here at the announcer's stand. So come up and identify it and tell us it's your phone. Yeah, I don't want to be repetitive, but I guess we could just about say do, ditto off, off that last class. Uh, I, I think this division's obviously lining up to be pretty competitive. Um, single entry, that darn sure could stand some more competition. Not going to talk this guy to a T. Uh, we'll, we'll do that when we get some more out here to compare to. But uh, uh, folks, take a look at this one, uh, kind of like that last class winner, just another darn good one. Uh, excited and looking forward to getting these guys back out here. Congratulations. Congratulations over here in your Angus Ring, Class 18B. First place to go to back number 222, BNWZ Dignity 8017, exhibited by Austin Nowatsky of Michigan City, Indiana. At this time, we'll be bringing in your final class here of Angus Bulls in your National Angus Bull Show, Class 19B. Back number 224, weight is 2509. Back number 227, Weight is 2636. Back number 228 is 2512. Back number 230 is 2480. And back number 232 is 2570.
Another good class of, of bulls here. And again, you start to nitpick these two. Uh, I think they are the two that softness, body shape, the way they're designed and put together you like. Start to study them at the ground, though. You start to see some differences. Uh, this one probably comes to you with a little more foot size and circumference. And I think his, his pasture angle is just per, uh, designed in a way that provides a little more flexibility there as well. Big and square up top. I like his added length and look and extension that he has there up front as well. He's a little weaker, maybe right in there behind his shoulder relative to this one. We're going to sit here in second, uh, but still a, a good bull. I like the bull here in second. He hits you hard right off the get-go. Big, big, powerful hip and back in this guy. I think he's smooth and proportional all the way through. I'm picky on back feet, and that's where I get on him. He's a little smaller in his foot, and when he lands and sets it to the surface, he's just not as secure, not as uh, confident in my mind in the way he sets that uh, to the ground. Burley Bull here that's got some middle, he's got some stoutness, he's got some ruggedness to him. Just maybe a little plainer constructed relative to those two. Maybe he doesn't have quite the center body that those two. Same thing can be said for the one that comes here next in four. Extreme length. He's got some neat, neat pieces to him. Just wish he was a little softer, easier fleshing looking today. Same thing for this guy here. Stout, stout, rugged skull. He's got some real shape and some real meat and muscle in him. Uh, just want to see him a little softer, a little further along in terms of his, his body condition. But really a nice set of Bulls. Congratulations. Results for Class 8, Horned Herford, Horned Herford Jr. Bull Calves. Entry 172 wins the class, DCF 642Z, Dilly 002H, exhibited by Dry Creek Farm, Pell City, Alabama. His weight was 1,300 this morning. Second place was entry 170, C. 2052 Long Range 0074, exhibited by Collier Herfords of Bruno, Idaho. This morning's weight was 1318. Thirteen, third place was entry 161, exhibited by Nelson Hershey Purebreds, Del Bonita, Alberta, Canada. Fourth place was entry 171, SCC Cox Barbarossa 985, exhibited by Ryan and Robin Samsel of Cloverdale, Indiana, live weight of 1289. And fifth place was entry 169, BSE 13 646 Super Freak G12, exhibited by Brad Shepard, Arapaho, Oklahoma, weighing 1185. We're now pulling in those class winners to show for Horn Herford Jr. Bull Calf. Representing our Class 7 was entry 164, VCR 711E Convoy 41H, exhibited by Valley Creek Ranch. And ex representing Class 8 was entry 172, DCF 642Z, Dilly 002H, exhibited by Dry Creek Farm, Pell City, Alabama. Here in this division, again, a, a nice set of bulls. This, this bull out of this first class, again, love his, his cavity, his number. Along with that, he's built like one in terms of just his structure and looseness is very, very good. Got a stout one behind him there. A pair of bulls that came out of the bigger class there. Again, powerful, rugged made animals. Just a little difference in the way they address the surface. We're going to keep those two together, though, out of the second class. They'll be our grand reserve here in this division. Probably tired of listening to me today, but uh, what I've said on the last couple of them single entry classes uh, uh, about what my family strives for when we look at these bulls and what we like and the passion we have for it. Uh, get down to these big guys here at the end of this. We're, we're not disappointed from those, those single entries either. Um, this is what we like. I mean, I get kind of crazy about these big guys, and I know I'm being repetitive. If you haven't figured that out already, I think you know I like the big bulls. Um, and then, you know, we'll compare them to some awfully good calves I know that are coming back here later. But when you evaluate these guys, first of all, these five individuals, and probably not to take away from the guys and the young lady that's on the end of the halter, um, but those in the back, um, a lot of credit goes to a team that puts this deal together when you talk about the big guys. Because uh, I know, and I know all too well, that uh, it's not easy. And keeping these bulls fresh, keeping them moving, um, they're at the age that, that we know darn good and well. They've gone out and they've done a little bit of breeding themselves, maybe been collected. And, and my hat's off to those individuals behind the scenes that the work on a daily basis to keep these guys where they are and to take those good qualities and just emphasize them. And, and this one that wins this class does that. Uh, this guy's pretty good. Um, 
you know, not, not to project into the future, but, uh, you know, we, we've got for ourselves and as Matt as well, we got a big next week ahead of us. Um, you know, Matt's been pretty hot and heavy in that Hereford deal already, and they've got some other breeds coming in, and we've got a, a big string of semis coming in, and, and we've got a big bull uh, that, that we're excited about. And uh, to have those guys at this point, to have them be able to move, have them fresh and have all the right parts and pieces to go with that. It's not easy, it's a challenge, but it's fun. And it's fun to evaluate something like this. And this guy's good. We, we like a lot of things about him and he wins this class quite handily and, and anxious to get him back out here for division. Uh, you know, just the freshness, the smoothness, the high quality that he has, he wins the class. And then we run into a few things as we get back here with these other four because there's some awfully good things about each one of them. They just run into an awfully good one to start. The young lady's bull that's next. So I certainly like that center dimension to him. And when you compare him and that third bull, you know, the testicular shape and development they have is, is, is where, in my opinion, they need to be. You look at them underneath, they're clean sheathed, they've got good feet underneath them. There's just more extension and balance to this calf or this big bull that ends up second compared to our third place. Third place bull, we like him for the stoutness. You know, there's plenty of muscle to that guy. You look behind him, really strong behind his shoulders. He's big top, he's got plenty of dimension from viewed from behind. Just run into a couple of those that just have a little more eye appeal to go any higher, but still an awfully good one. You get down to these other two, you know, it, it's a shame we've got to be a fourth and fifth because there's some awfully good things to these guys. The bull that's fourth, you know, we, we like the extension to him. We like that footwork underneath him. He gets a little tight for us behind the point of that shoulder to go any higher, but still a good bull. The one that rounds out the class, a stout, powerful type of bull. We just wish we could soften him up, maybe not make him quite as round so he could go higher in this class, but still an impressive lineup. Look forward to seeing the class winner back out here for division. Back over on the Horn side. Coming out of that last two classes, our division champion was 172, exhibited by Dry Creek Farm, Pell City, Iowa. That was on DCF 642Z, Dilly 002H. Our reserve division champion was entry 170C, 2052, Long Range 0074, exhibited by Collier Herfords, Bruno, Idaho. We also had class nine coming in exhibit. That was entry 174, LF 4111, screenshot 9228, exhibited by Logan Bryant Rhodes of Paris, Illinois. His live weight was 1244. Currently exhibiting class 10, Pole Senior Bull Kevs. Well, congratulations over here in your Angus ring. Your final class here in your National Angus Bull Show will be Class 19B. Placings were as follows. First place was back number 224, Silveris Forbes, 8088, exhibited by Chris and Sharon Sankey. Silvera Brothers and Rockin' S Ranch Incorporated. Way down that bowl was 2509. Second place in that class went to back number 232. Laughlin's Marvel 1801 exhibited by Kenneth Hartzell, Joseph Mather, and Walbridge Farms. Third place in that class went to back number 228. Evans Paycheck 86 exhibited by Brad Eldon Evans and Pitts Livestock. Fourth place in that class went to back number 227, WCC Chips F6, exhibited by Wilson Cattle Company and Wooden Shoe Farms. And fifth place in that class went to back number 230, Conley Popeye 8250, exhibited by Fly and G Ranch and Connolly Cattle. Currently in your Angus ring, we are selecting your champion in reserve in your senior yearling bull division. Got another good set of, of bulls here on, on our pole side. Uh, impressive bull here leads off. Uh, you talk about muscle shape, body dimension, and still keeps himself very collected and good in terms of balance. Uh, you like this bull quite a bit. Really, really rugged in the way he's put together, yet still there's some style. There's still some symmetry to him. You could get on him a, a little more and say maybe he's got a little extra set to his rear leg, but boy, he's sound. He's athletic to have that kind of meat and muscle in him. Really long-sided bull here that's probably got the edge in terms of just top strength and smoothness and layway he lays into the shoulder of this pair but Bob that comes at the sacrifice and not being a stout and powerful all the way through want to set him down just a, a little more correctly there from hawk to ground as well but that's a good pair of bulls
Catching that back over here on the Polt Hereford side in the senior bull calf range. Class 10, entry 176, BR Cronk G036 wins the class. By show exhibited by Bryden Barber, Aiden Barber, and Riley Barber. His live weight this morning was 1,606. Second place in that class was entry 177. SLC, Mr. Cool Cash, GSP2, exhibited by Samantha Lynn Campbell of Eaton, Colorado. His weight this morning was 1,480. We're now on class 11, Pole Senior Bull Calves. Following this class, we'll go right into our Pole Senior Bull Calf Champion and Reserve Champion. I know we're not uh, to the grand drive yet, and, and I can't tell you how excited I am to to get all of them back out here because, uh, you know, th th this is what we strive for to get these these bulls to this point. And, and, and I, I try really hard when I'm judging a show to forget what just left the ring and, and concentrate what's in front of me. But I can't help but think back to the, the quality of some of those calves. And, uh, you know, just in hopes looking at those calves that, that, that will maintain that all the way to these big guys. And uh, my hat's off to you, Angus Breeders, because you've done that. Uh, it's impressive. And we'll talk about that a little more in depth here in a little bit. But, uh, um, you know, I guess I drew the, whether you want to look at it lucky or unlucky, to be the one on the mic to, to talk about this division, figure out what we're going to do here, and I don't need to prolong any more than I want to, but uh, first and foremost, these four individuals out here are good. They, they, there's, some, there's some good out here. There's some quality, and we like them. We talked about these guys being single entries and scaring off some competition, and, well, they got some competition when we come back out here. Um, just a couple little things to, to, to talk about these guys, just so you know what's going through our minds when we're t out here talking when, without the microphone is this first one that comes out. Man, I really like that guy when you look at him just on that profile. I, I like all of them on the profile. I like all of them when you put them in motion. I like the strength that this guy carries through that spine. I like how he ties in at the point of that shoulder. Um, we're not, we don't need to compare on the terms of true dimension and, and, and rib shape and body because all four of these have it out here and, and, and they've got plenty for me. Um, if we're going to get picky, this one can compare to a few others or a couple others. If we could freshen him up just ever so slightly and lay the point of that shoulder in just ever so slightly, I think this deal even gets tougher than it already is. And believe me, it's, it's tough. I mean, th this deal's... This deal's tight. Uh, it, it, it's pretty darn close. But there's a lot of good to that one. That front end, that shoulder, is the only thing we like to tweak on him. And when I say tweak, I mean just ever so slightly. We get to the calf that's behind him right here in the middle. This is the one, in those terms, when we describe these cattle, holds that advantage. He is fresher. He does lay at that point of that shoulder a hint better. Maybe not quite as powerful over his top. But still, very similar when you talk about types and kinds and the quality that goes together there and a lot of good to him. You know, certainly like that freshness about him. A bull that's youthful still, even at his age. A bull that can move. Uh, and all these guys can move. And I appreciate that for these big bulls. And then we get our last class winner out here. This guy's pretty neat. He's the big guy of the bunch. He's the one that uh, I think that Thunderstruck song they just played is the reason he's out here in this division. He's going to win this division. Congratulations. Congratulations in your senior yearling division. Your champion will go to back number 224, Silveris Forbes 8088. That is out of class 19B. Second place in that class went to back number 232, Laughlin's Marvel 1801.
and congratulations, reserve champion in your senior yearling division. We'll go to back number 222, BNWZ Dignity 8017, exhibited by Austin Nowatsky, Michigan City, Indiana. At this time, we are going to look to bring in all of your grand and reserve division winners out of your Angus Bull Show. Coming out of your spring bull calf division over here in the Angus ring, champion went to Connolly Verified 0853, exhibited by Connolly Cattle, Sulphur, Oklahoma. Reserve champion in that division was exhibited by Silveris Brothers, Fireball, California, and Tri-T Farms with Silveris Convoy 0340. That was back number 121. In your winter bull calf division, your champion was exhibited by Karis Collison of Rockwell City, Iowa with Collison Pure Alpha. Back number on that bull was 153. Reserve champion winter bull calf went to Boyd Rainfall 0002 exhibited by Boyd Beef Cattle of Mazelik, Kentucky. In your senior bull calf division, Champion was exhibited by Zachary McCall of Greenville, Virginia, and Sunrise Sunset Farm in Williamsburg, Indiana, with MC Roundtable 9088. Reserve champion in that division was back number 192, Vision Southern Charm 9082, exhibited by Austin Wieselmeyer, Amherst, Colorado. Coming out of your intermediate division, champion intermediate bull was exhibited by Samuel Paul Henderson, East Troy, Wisconsin, with Hill Valley Reckoning 931. And reserve champion went to Hortzman Secret Society 961G, exhibited by Larry and Joe Hortzman, West Lafayette, Indiana, and Ridge Cattle Company, Nancy, Kentucky. Coming out of your junior yearling bull division, champion was exhibited by back number 220, Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma, with EXAR Fundamental 9186B. Reserve champion junior yearling bull exhibited by Express Angus Ranches of Yukon, Oklahoma, EXAR Expressway 1079B. And coming out of your senior yearling bulls, champion senior yearling bull was exhibited by Chris and Sharon Sankey, Council Grove, Kansas, Silvera Brothers, Firebach, California, Rocking S Ranch, Incorporated, Riverdale, California. That was Silveras Forbes, 8088. Reserve champion in your final division here in your National Angus Bull Show was exhibited by Austin Nowatsky, Michigan City, Indiana, with BNWZ Dignity, 8017. For those of you sitting in the stands, please join me in putting your hands together for all of our Angus exhibitors here at your National Angus Bull Show. Here in our pole side on the Hereford deal, uh, again, good pair of bulls here, and, and neither one of them moves ideal is what I like them to, but I like the body, I like the symmetry, I like the way this one transitions from his shoulder back into his lower body a little better. Still one you can get on top of him, I like his width and his softness there, and then at the surface, even though he steps outside of himself a little bit from behind, I still like the way his hind leg plants in terms of his foot and the way he sets there, so a little plainer maybe up front in terms of his chest, uh, got a little extra condition there, but just a, a good Good solid bull. Bull we run here in second. If, if he looked just like this, walking as he does standing, I uh, switch those two because that one's a little cleaner and neater there up front. I like the crispness of his lines. I like the levelness and length out of his hip there. When we get him into motion, though, he wants to roll up in his back, tuck up in his lower body just to touch more. And although that one gets outside of himself, this one here in second maybe wants to close up just a shade more underneath. But that's an interesting pair of bulls. Real powerful one here. Lots of shape. Big, big, big monster pins in this guy. Really big over his top and, and still has some neatness to him. Just got to make the decision, is it a little too much in terms of just the coarseness of his shoulder? I like to relax his hind leg just a touch as well. Young lady, he's got a really nice long-sided one here that's got a neat look to him. Probably as long-strided and loose-moving as anything amongst this group, but probably at the same time just gets overpowered here today. Not the same kind of width we find in those ahead of him, but four nice calves there.
Congratulations. Results for Class 11 pulled senior bull calves. First place goes to entry 183B, 6077 Gettysburg, 9239, exhibited by Bowling Herefords, Blackwell, Oklahoma. His weight this morning was 1,571. Second place was entry 184C, 1311, Mr. Canada, 9327, exhibited by Collier Herefords, Bruno, Idaho. His weight this morning was 1,563. Third place was entry 180, DD Outer Banks 032, exhibited by Jalen Davis, Maple Hill, Kansas. The weight this morning was 1,684. And fourth place was entry 185, PCH George W, 601G, exhibited by Tegan Hames of Tuttle, Oklahoma, with a weight this morning of 1,338. We're now bringing in all of our class winners to show for polled senior bull calf champion and reserve champion. Well, back over here on your Angus side at this time, it is my honor to announce the American Angus Association 2021 Herdsman of the Year. Herdsman of the Year is an award given to an individual who excels at presenting an Angus show string to maximize the value of genetics, eye appeal, and overall presentation. Herdsmen spend countless hours both in the barn and in the stalls preparing cattle for exhibition. In addition, the herdsman manages staff and builds a positive relationship with current and potential customers. In addition, a quality herdsman is one who shows good character, sportsmanship, and goes the extra mile to help fellow breeders. This award is calculated from secret ballots that are cast by Cattlemen's Congress exhibitors. At this time, it is my honor to announce the winner of the 2020, 2021 Herdsman of the Year, Mr. Alex Bauer of Connolly Cattle Company. Congratulations, Alex, if you can make your way into the ring at this time to meet Madeline Bauer and Miss, Angus, Miss American Angus, Ellie Kidwell, we would like to present you with a belt buckle on behalf of the American Angus Association. At this time, we will turn it over to our judges, Mr. Jason Elmore and Matt Scass, to select your champion and reserve champion bull here at the National Angus Bull Show. At this time, please join me in putting your hands together to thank our judges today. Well, our time has, has come uh, as we get out here for the grand drive of this, uh, the, the ROV Angus Bull Show. And uh, to say we're impressed uh, is hands down an understatement. Um, you know, uh, and it's, it's no different than any other breed. Obviously, our numbers are going to be fewer in a bull show than a female show. Um, but being repetitive once again, uh, I love this part of it. I love looking at the bulls and, and trying to project these calves into the future and what they can do and analyzing those big guys as they're uh, out breeding cows or as they're putting up semen and, and the ability to uh, the people behind the scenes to put these guys out here in the ring and uh, it, it's fun. I mean, Matt and I just right here real quickly was like, well, we're at that point of the day, but it's been fun, and and that is an understatement. You know, the, the it's been fun, it's been exciting. You know, we're, I'm not going to go through and talk each and every one of these individually. I'm just going to sit here and tell you that at that end down there, there's some awfully good ones. Uh, I think some, uh, you know, ones that, that a lot of programs can grab a hold of and run with. And you get here in the middle. Um, man, there, there's some neat ones right there. You know, the, you talk about uh, projecting those guys. I think they're awfully good. You look at these calves. Uh, man, there's nothing but a bright, bright future for these guys. Uh, I think the, the long term of these calves is is, is pretty unique. Um, we glance over the top of these guys and look at those reserves, and it's tough to stand over there. But uh, you know, uh, this kind of a something I'm going to say that typically projects more to the junior deal than an open deal. But man, you can't hang your head on on anything that that's being let in on a halter on that side of the ring either. I mean, the quality is is awfully, awfully deep and awfully, awfully good. Uh, Matt and I are definitely looking forward to tomorrow. We think it's going to be an exciting day. Uh, it's going to be a big day. We're honored to do it. You know, there's definitely some things that need to be said on the mic that, that we're going to hold off and, and keep for tomorrow. Um, but right now we need to, hands down, and, and I ask everybody in this building, this side and that side, please give a round of applause to the people behind the scenes of this Cattlemen's Congress. It doesn't get any better. Thank you. 
Man, I've both had the opportunity and the privilege to uh, tell a lot of cattle into this ring. You know, over the years with that Oklahoma Youth Expo, you know, we, we've followed a lot of them down that ramp. We've put a lot of them together back there behind the scenes. And, um, you know, we, we are in Oklahoma. No offense to everybody that's not in Oklahoma, but we're pretty proud of this state. We're pretty proud of this operation. Um, we have been, you know, amongst the barns a little bit with other breeds and, uh, you know, ju just the, the talk in, in the barns and, you know, how neat this has been and how thankful everyone has been from, I don't care where you're from. Uh, I have not heard negativity about this show. And, and it's, a, it's a freshness that, that we've loved hearing, we love seeing, that this deal's been fun. And for me personally, you know, those on the podium, those behind the scenes, those in the office, uh, me personally, I want to thank you. You all stepped up to the plate. Uh, what a class act event. Uh, I'm, my hat's off to you. I commend you for that. Uh, real quickly, you know, just uh, I'll save a lot of it for tomorrow, but, uh, you know, I'm impressed with this show. I'm impressed with the breed. I'm impressed with the people behind the scenes. And, you know, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be out here. And I can't ever go without the opportunity in a public aspect to thank those that are important to you. And I'm telling you, there, there, there's an army behind me. You know, those guys back there that have been at the stalls, the ones that are at home, you know, we fought snow, we fought ice, we fought mud, no different than everybody else. Uh, I'll put those guys up to anybody. They, they've been a test for me, a test of time to, to stick with us and do what we do. And then my family. You know, there, there's a little speech I need to give tomorrow, and I'm not going to get in that to that right now. But, but my wife and girls, you know, uh, they're the reason I do what I do. Heck of a show. I'm going to find you a champion. Congratulations, your grand champion Angus Bull at the National Angus Bull Show here at the Cattlemen's Congress. We'll go to back number 224, Silvera, Silveris Forbes, 8088, exhibited by Chris and Sharon Sankey, Council Grove, Kansas, Silveris Brothers, and Rockin' S Ranch, Incorporated. Reserve champion in that division, exhibited by Austin Nowatsky. And your reserve champion, Angus Bull, is going to be exhibited by Austin Nowatsky, Michigan City, Indiana, with BNWZ Dignity 8017. Once again, congratulations to all of our bull exhibitors, and we will see you here tomorrow in the Jim Norick Arena for your female show here in the Angus Ring. Back on the Hereford side of things, we'll wake you back up again over here. Uh, really a nice set of them uh, that we're bringing out within this division, that single entry that we didn't get the chance to discuss yet. Really neat looking one amongst this group. Uh, again, I like his outline. I like his silhouette when we get out here. He's very soft made, a nice back leg and, and good foot underneath him there as well. You get him behind him and, and compare him. Maybe he's not just as, as totally powerful and opened up, so you got to see where you are there. Uh, Bullet came out next class. Again, muscular, athletic. He's got some shape to him there 